Well, I, I just think as you watch Big East games to this point, uh, you know, who, who's an easy out? You know, like, you, you know, DePaul was picked towards the bottom and they they lose a close one to Xavier and then they lead Villanova for 35 minutes last night. So, you know, I just think top to bottom, the league's really balanced. You have to be ready every single night, regardless of where, where you're playing. And I felt like road wins would be hard to come by, but so far more road teams have won than home teams. So. Uh, I think it's going to be a crazy ride this year, and we have to try to we have to try to get every win we can. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, you know, I think we're going to see a team that's probably a little angry right now. You know, they they, they played pretty well for their non-conference portion of their uh, schedule. Uh, lost on a last-second shot to Indiana, uh, beat Florida, and then they went to Florida after Christmas and got popped, uh, and then lost their home opener. So I think we're going to see a team that's not very happy, uh, that's going to be focused, that's going to be engaged, and. Uh, we're going to have to match their intensity. What's special about playing in that arena, that venue? And I'm sure as a basketball guy, that's still pretty, a pretty cool setting. It's a historic place. Every time you walk in it, you know, it's, it's, it's really a neat place. And, you know, we all watch the movie Hoosiers and, and uh, my favorite basketball movie. So, uh, you know, I, I, like, I like what they've done with some of the remodel, but at the same time, they've, they've, they've kept the tradition intact and some of the things that make it unique and special and historical. Uh, they were able to continue to capture even with the remodel. In terms of the basketball side of things, what's difficult about the matchup with Butler? Things they present on film. That well, you know, Baldwin's a hard guard. Uh, you know, he's he can he's got a great mid-range game. He's not shooting it from the three as well as he has in the past, uh, but he can get you in the post. Uh, he gets you off the dribble, and they can surround him with shooters. McDermott uh, shooting it great. Jorgensen shooting it great. Tucker, uh, the transfer from Duke, has been a good addition from the three-point line and. And then they've got, you know, a solid inside game with Fowler and Bronx. So, you know, they've got a lot of pieces and they've got a lot of guys that played last year. And uh, But, you know, guys are playing different roles, much like our team and a lot of teams across the conference. And uh, until those roles tend to get a, you know, get a little bit more solid across the board so everybody understands what they're supposed to do, I think you're going to see some ebbs and flows to the way teams play. And we've been guilty of that. And Butler's certainly been guilty of that the last game or two. What has Bishop uh, given you here the last few weeks with a lot of action? On uh, Christian's activity has been really good. Uh, you know, with Jacob out, uh, we need another athletic presence to give us some of the things that we don't have with Jacob. Jacob was our best rim protector, and, and now Christian has to uh, embrace that role. Uh, you know, we have, we have three guys there, and they all bring different things, and uh, Christian's seven minutes at Providence were a very efficient, important seven minutes. How did Tyshawn grade out on film against Providence? Uh, he did, a, yeah, he did a, defensively. Yeah, defensively. Yeah, he, he, he did a good job. You know, as a group, we did a pretty good job defensively, and our blockouts were on point. Um, you know, I thought we were the first team to the floor when there, when there was a loose ball, um, and we did a good job of taking care of the basketball for the most part. Um, and when you do that at Providence, you're going to have a chance. If you don't do it, you have no chance. Did you notice anything different in terms of throws in pregame, you know, vibes or anything like that being on the road, you know, in conference play versus – uh, you know, I don't know if there's anything different. You know, we we played two really good teams in the road in, in Nebraska and Oklahoma uh, in the non-conference portion. So, I mean, if you can't get it ready for those, you've got a problem. Uh, but you know, I think there's a you know, I think there's a new beginning feeling to the start of conference play. I think the excitement and anticipation of that uh, is pretty cool. Uh, but our, our guys were focused. We had we had good preparation for Providence, uh, and I thought we carried over our game plan very well and. Uh, we got one more day to get ready for Butler, and we're going to have to carry over a similar game plan. What's Caleb giving you off the bench? Looks like you know, you're shooting the ball really well, really efficient, taking care of it. Um, I guess how important are the, the 10 to 12 minutes he's kind of yeah. giving you? Uh, Caleb's done a good job. He's made good decisions with the basketball. Defensively, he's made uh, incredible strides from a year ago. Uh, and right now, he's shooting the ball at a really high level. Hit maybe the biggest shot of the game at Providence when they kind of got back in and got their crowd into it. He had a three right in front of our bench. At, uh, that's kind of started our run to put the game away. So, you know, the luxury of having a senior that you can bring off the bench is really huge for us. And for us to have him and Connor uh, that we can bring off the bench that maybe can bring a little stability and a little calmness to the floor has been a positive for us. How important is it for a guy at his position as he move to the two to be able to give you some valuable minutes off the bench? That way you don't have to kind of, I guess, run Tyshawn into the ground minutes. 
place. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, your bench is going to be important, especially as the year goes on. Uh, you know, guys get beat up a little bit, you get a little bit tired, you've got to try to, um, you know, sometimes you shrink your rotation as the season goes on. So it, it's really important that Caleb and Connor continue to move forward and continue to improve. Uh, you know, at this point, they've been very, very important, and, and uh, they will be moving forward. Do you put any extra emphasis on trying to attack Baldwin, you know, when he's on the defensive side and try and just, you know, get him moving and get him running around? Yeah, you know, we want to get him out in transition, obviously, but they do a pretty good job of taking that away. But I think, I think the combination of Baldwin and Thompson uh, defensively are as good as we face. Uh, they're, they're elite defensively. They're long. They're tough. They're strong. Uh, they're very disruptive on the basketball. Uh, so it's going to be a challenge for our guards to get us into our offense the way that we want to. Uh, but, you know, he's he's a problem on both ends of the floor. That's why he's one of the better players in our league. Do one more. Nice. E you know, every time you say that, nobody ever has one more. Do you notice that? Shut it down. Or, or you ask I four I texted him this morning, but he <laughs> must have been at practice, so I haven't heard from him. Yet. 27. 27 years old. Right? The last few weeks, back to you, uh, you've seen a lot of action. Uh, what's this been like for you? Uh, yeah, it's been a major confidence boost for uh, myself, and like just being able to show the coach I can play and help the team out. Were you ready? Uh, did you feel you were ready uh, to see action this quick? Uh, yeah, I felt like I was ready to practice these scenarios and go through them every single day in practice, so it helps a lot. Uh, this summer when, when I guess you were preparing yourself for what Big East play might be like and the position you might play, like you were handling the physicality, um, how much was that in your mind in the weight room this summer when you were thinking about potential people that you were going to guard this week? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, this summer we are uh, just tons of lifting, and uh, I knew I had to get stronger. Obviously, I wasn't that strong when I got here. Right. So when I got here, just hit the gym hard and got stronger so I could play against people as strong as like Martin and uh, keep building on strength. How did it feel, I guess, uh, the other night against Providence, going against Nate Watson, who's probably one of the bigger guys in the league, but I mean, you know, you, know, you have to be physical to be able to handle that matchup. Like, what was it like going against that? How do you think you did, I guess? Yeah, I can hold my own against him, but he's a big dude. He's got to play strong. I got to be smarter than he is whenever I play. Can you, can you take us through that, that sequence where – um, he was posting you up. Yeah. He kind of got you off balance a little bit. Yeah. But I think Murph talks a lot about, about your second bounce. You kind of get off the ground second time to get that block shot. I guess. How did you make that play happen? Even though, I mean, what the disadvantage you had physicality? There, really? Well, his physicality. I mean, he kind of gave me a little bump and threw me off balance. So I just had to recover, come back, and when he threw it up, he didn't throw it up too high, so I could make it make the ball a little bit. Pass to a teammate with the block. That was a pretty big play. You guys hit that transition three right after that. Right? Yeah. How much juice did you get from that play, that whole sequence, getting the block shot and then getting the rhythm through from Tyshawn down the floor? It gave the team a lot of fuel, just playing hard and just helps a lot. Yeah. What's been the biggest, uh, the biggest, you know, progress that you've made in any one area so far this season? Is there anything that you're happy with, you know, your development in so far? Yeah, I think my jump shot's come a long way. I know I wasn't able to shoot the ball too well when I first got down here. and. Um, also, with building strength, like we were talking about earlier, really, just hitting the gym hard, extra workouts, eating a lot of food. They don't keep me eating all the time, so that helps a lot as well. Did you, I mean, you obviously expected to come in and make an impact, but you hope to come in, but um, I guess at the start of the year, when you're not getting the minutes that maybe you'd like to be getting, obviously, yeah. how do you handle that as a player knowing that you know, your, your time will come eventually? I mean, you got to know um, not a lot of freshmen come in and get to play a lot. Um, obviously, like, Marcus is saying they got to show their chance. Um, I finally got mine, so now I'm showing Coach what I can do. Did you follow Creighton and Ryan when you were down there? Down there in, in that area? Were you following the DJs much? How much? Yeah, they've been recruiting me since I was a sophomore, so I've just been keeping up with them, seeing how they've been playing. They've been playing really well, obviously, and um, this style of, um, of play, I enjoyed that, so I wanted to be a part of it and join them. You're the only guy on the team that has a shot of three pointers. Is that going to come sometime this season? It's just, if I have the chance to do it, I'm gonna shoot it. Like let it fly. We <laughs> <laughs> haven't missed a shot, by the way, in five games. I how, much, how much pride do you take in just being perfect? I mean, I don't mind missing a shot or anything. It's just you gotta take smart shots. So when smart shots come, you just gotta put them in, knock them down, make the ones that count. Uh, I heard
heard it had a great atmosphere there, so that's going to be something really fun to play in because I never played there, obviously, before, and just trying to get away with a good win down there because they're a good team. Yeah, it's helped us with our confidence a lot and then also how hard we need to play to beat a team on the road in their place. All right, you're good? All right, appreciate it. Thanks, appreciate it. Have you seen the movie Hoosiers? Yeah. What's that matchup going to be like? Uh, it would be, I mean, intense. He pretty much has the ball for about 20 seconds of the possession sometimes. So, I mean, uh, it's just, you just have to stay locked in, stay down, and uh, not go for the fakes. So it should be a really good matchup for him. What's this game mean to you? I'm sorry, you said scheme or team? Yeah, what, how important is getting to get started here in the Big East? Oh, I mean, it's really important because a, a lot of the teams now in the Big East are, I mean, challenging. Everybody's gotten better, so um, every game counts, and especially to pick up a road win, that's, I mean, that's important, especially early in the uh, conference play. Yeah, so, uh, oh, sorry. I, I guess as a guy who's just trying to pride himself on the defensive end of the floor now, you kind of have to see what it's like to, for a main guy to get you in foul trouble the other night. What did yeah. you, I guess, learn about that experience of, Having a main assignment like that and for them to get you in foul trouble early and have to play through that the rest of the game. Right. I, it sucked. I mean, it was it was terrible for me, but uh, it just made me immediately think about, like, the things that, like, Kyrie went through. Uh, I talked to him a lot, um, and he was just saying that, you know, that guys are going to be good. I mean, you're going to have the best player, and that it's, it's important not to get too caught up in that. Just, you know, stay composed because uh, it's, it's tough because you still want to play aggressive. But you know that you have to back off a little bit trying to carry three fouls. But, um, and credit him, he's a good player. But just just learning how to be more versatile in different positions because sometimes it'll be a post three player, sometimes it'll be a quick shifty point guard. So you never know. Well, Rob had a note, it's been like 77 years since Creighton has started conference with two road wins in a row. Wow. I'm just thinking about how difficult it is to do. Obviously, that's a you know, pretty magic stat. But I mean, if you think about it, how difficult that is to start conference play. How important is this win be for you? I mean, that's huge. 77 years, that's a long time. So, I mean, to, to get one of those, that's important, especially against a, a good home team. And th we know that they're going to be um, battling hard. They just had two, you know, tough losses. So, I know we're going to get their best shot. And it's, it's important that we get this one. Um, a, lot of, a lot of guys who can... Uh, you know, switch through one through three or even four sometimes. Um, there'll be different matchups, so we have to pretty much listen when the coach is talking to, you know, the three man, even if you're the point guard, because you may be switched on. Just, I mean, small stuff like that. A lot of cuts, back doors, and guys who can shoot it with a quick release. So we just got to be uh, prepared at, at all spots. The difference between on the road with success, you know, after the first couple oh. didn't go your way. Getting a road win last week. It makes the flight back home better. I mean, <laughs> everybody's not quiet. We can finally talk on the road. So it's cool. Hey, Damien, what has uh, Bishop meant to this team these last few weeks that he's come in as a freshman and started? I mean, that's I, I treat Chris, that's like my little brother. I mean, I it's just, I was so proud of him to see him, you know, ready. He he went from playing maybe one minute to, you know, being that guy that kept us in the game on the road versus Providence. So I mean all credit to that young man for you know staying ready. Um, I, I told him even my freshman year, you, I mean, you never know, you never know. Just stay ready, and, and that's exactly what he did. And I, I hope uh, he continues his success. Hey, just a two on a couple of plays he made. The first one was uh, digging up the ball, getting that steal, and yep. you know, diving on the floor court to get possession for you guys. How much of a tone setter was that on the road to see him make a 50-50 play like that, win it, and then yeah. you know kind of give you guys some energy that you doesn't come from making a shot here. Right. I, it was huge. I mean, that that's what we talked about, the 50-50 hustle, hustle plays, and a guy, uh, not only a guy, but a freshman that didn't play, comes off the bench to, you know, show that he can dive on the floor. I mean, that, that's huge for a team, the momentum. And I feel like once he did that, it was kind of like an energy shift for us in that game. So, I mean, that was huge when, when he did that, and it showed that, you know, if he can do it, then, like, why not everybody? Everybody get down dirty, and let's get this win on the road. To him, the next possession, he kind of has a little bit more fight, like he wants it back really bad. And he's made big plays for you guys yeah. in that regard throughout the season. Like, how big is that to see? You mentioned the 
Christian, but mm-hmm. to see a freshman at his position kind of have that, that mentality. I mean, that's big. Um, that's really big for him because, you know, with me being an upperclassman, uh, a freshman that can come in and make a huge impact like that, um, that's showing that he's prepared for the future. I mean, he's ready, and um, and I like what Marcus is doing out there. He's a chippy, gussy guy, and I know that when we're in the game together, he's going to give me his all. And, I mean, that's all you can ask for as a leader. So I appreciate it from all the freshmen. How do you like playing off of him? Because it allows you to, if he comes in, it allows you to be show off more of your versatility. Yeah. I guess play off the ball a little bit. How is that dynamic going for you? Um, I like it because when he comes in, I can, you know, catch my breather, especially playing uh, against a good offensive player when I'm on the defensive end. It helps me, you know, catch a break, get off the ball for a little bit and um, not bring it up and, you know, show a little bit more what I can do offensively with, you know, attacking, getting downhill and, you know, getting my bag a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right, appreciate it. Yep. Thanks.